and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one returning good brother and one newcomer into the temple. They are the double-headed monster that composes Roleplay Elixir, previously on the temple with the Ro with the Roman punk adventure um, Caravia Victor, now, go now going into historical fantasy with Tales of Kings and Dragons. In the red corner we have Batuan... To, um, <laughs> I'm not pronouncing the last name, sorry. And in the blue corner we have Levant. How you two doing today, man? Thank you for having us, Mildra. Uh, I, I'm I'm the old one, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um. And hi, everyone. I'm Liv. Mm -hmm. So, I th as I I I've got I got the origin story with Botswan the last the last couple of times I had him on. So I'd like to pivot into your origin story, Levant. Um, how? Walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Oh, all right. Uh, I think I started role-playing uh, games like I was in uh, mid-school because uh, my big brother was playing it. And my cousin uh, picked it up really fast as well. So uh, ever since then, I'm actually playing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's it's really uh, it's really a, a part of my life uh, right now because uh, I just uh, I don't know it's uh, everything just revolves around it I think yeah so with that in, with that in mind um, I would like to get can get a feel for how the idea of tales of kings and dragons started I'm going forward I'm going to be referring to this as KOD or or uh, K, K and D, I should say, just for the sake of my sanity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, but so you want to go with it? Yeah, and now we have a new original, uh, you know, <laughs> short version of <laughs> Tales of Kings and Dragons, and and that's fine. <laughs> I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, thank you again for uh, having us. Uh, as you know, we... Uh, actually, I was planning to ask you uh, a question uh, from my side, but uh, let, let me start uh, with uh, answering your then. Then I will uh, give you my own question and get ready for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, okay, the Tales of Kings and Dragons uh, was born when uh, we just... Uh, we were just close to finishing writing the Karovia Victor, the Roman Empire-themed uh, 5e uh, supplement. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in that we we had focused on uh, on solely the Roman Empire and uh, its uh, its neighboring uh, countries and nations and cultures, uh, actually. But um, it was just uh, one time, one era, and then we. Uh, we just wanted to do more. We uh, uh, we wanted to implement more stories in uh, more eras because uh, we just couldn't help our uh, you know interest and love uh, for history and merging it uh, with uh, role playing games and Dungeons and Dragons. And um, then um, we actually asked a lot of our. Uh, a lot of our backers and uh, a lot of the people that uh, helped us uh, make make Karelia Victor alive, and we we asked them what what more do you want to see? What uh, what should we write? We were we were actually having ideas, of course, but uh, we said okay, let's also uh, listen to our backers. What uh, what would they like to play next? So uh, a lot of people. Uh, told us about the their interest in the Arturian age, uh, you know, and it, it was really, uh, you know, um, it, it didn't surprise us because the Arturian age and the Arturian legends uh, are the the backbone of uh, maybe the whole uh, you know Western uh, mm -hmm. fantasy culture because 
they, they are the uh, they are what caused uh, Tolkien and uh, you know others to uh, write all their materials. So uh, we said, okay, we will uh, do something about uh, Arthurian legends. Uh, we will uh, merge. Actually, it's also it's already merged uh, the the fantasy and the history, but uh, we want to do more. We want to turn it into um, something that today uh, that is playable today. So the 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 old versions and the original, let's say the original versions of the uh, Arthurian legends are okay, but uh, they need some uh, twitching to. Uh, to let them be playable uh, as a as a campaign or as an adventure in uh, today's uh, you know ver let's say in uh, in let's say today's version of Dungeons and Dragons uh, so today's uh, generation to to the people who uh, who has met for the first time with uh, role playing games and to the people who first uh, or newly just recently played Dungeons and Dragons. In order for them to be able to maybe learn more about Arthurian legends and uh, play those stories, we need to change them a little bit. We need to uh, twist them and uh, give maybe also our version uh, of the Arthurian legend. And when that idea was around, we we then started to think more. Okay, Arthurian legend. That's that's okay. That's what our bikers wanted. Uh, but we also want more. So then we started to think on some legend that would uh, reshape the world's uh, history, maybe. So uh, what, what would happen if the dragons uh, had actually uh, came to the earth um, long before the time that the humans, uh, humans walked on it? So, uh, and somehow um, they, they found ways to uh, hide themselves in the shadows. Uh, or maybe they were banished. Well, when we were uh, brainstorming about these issues, uh, we came up with uh, three ideas, and those three ideas uh, then evolved into three uh, into three different legends. Uh, and just we uh, we then placed them in uh, in some parts of history that uh, you know that we wanted to write about. So okay, first case Arthurian legends. Uh, let's let's write a story where uh, King Arthur and Merlin fights about fight uh, against the dragons. Uh, then uh, we said okay, the, we we have a story that fits just uh, great about Chinese history and uh, you know the stone. Uh, may, uh, maybe people are familiar with the stone soldiers uh, statue. Uh, there's thousands of statues that it's uh, the, called the Terracotta Army. Uh, in China, so uh, we have a story that could just uh, define how they uh, <laughs> it maybe make a mythos about it and how they turned to uh, stone these soldiers. And the the last one was uh, you know um, about an underground city uh, that was uh, beneath a, a very uh, you know, uh, s someplace sacred, and uh, <laughs> when we told when we told about, okay, what what is the most holy or sacred site that we can uh, think of, or uh, you know, um, that that can first appear in our minds? What what do we want to write about most? And that was Jerusalem, and that was the uh, history of the Crusades. Then we put our uh, this hidden. Uh, city, uh, which uh, which uh, the dragons were and the dragons and other uh, monsters were hiding uh, below Jerusalem, and that brought us to the uh, Crusades area. Uh, and then we just kept on, uh, you know, formalizing uh, what we were brainstorming into one uh, into one, uh, you know, narrative uh, that would uh, that that would. Uh, link them all together, and uh, that gave us uh, the tales of kings and dragons eventually. So I, I hope that a uh, little bit summarizes and uh, satisfies you uh, and your question. Maybe. Now it sounded like you, there was a question that you wanted to ask me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. 
So here it comes. Uh, you were actually a, a, a backer of the Karovio Victor. So uh, thank you very much mm -hmm. about it. Uh, and uh, you got your uh, PDF copy. Uh, I I uh, I think so. Uh, I don't know if I, don't, yeah, I can't I remember right now if if you applied for a uh, hard cop hardcover one. But I did. Uh, I did not. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, how was it? Uh, well, it was uh, obviously it was our first product and first work. Uh, now we have gained a lot. Now we are working with uh, more artists and uh, more people, and we are making maybe better things. But uh, <laughs> did you like it? Uh, how was it like? I I just want to have your feedback on it. Um. I my my st my stance on Ca on Caravia Victor was that it that um I definitely enjoyed it um I think the I think the it was a it was a bit of an awkward period when it, when I got it because around the same time I got my I got the hardcover version of Age of Antiquity both of them are doing a ro a kind a kind of Roman punk approach the the difference is, Age of Antiquity is playing it relatively straight, whereas you, whereas you are leaning far more into this, um, fa this fantasy mix, and it's one, it's one of the, it's one of those things that does that um isn't qu isn't quite est established um early on. Because like I could see I could see somebody um, grabbing care of the Victor and thinking that they're going to be doing some something something a little bit something a little bit more historical um, lean in the vein of say Lex Arcana and then you ha then you have dragons you have you have centipedes and and all of that I'm not saying that's a bad thing it's just it's just one of those it's just a case of in the f going forward. Um, I think it's important to establish the level of fantastic when you're doing historical work, when you're doing historical uh -huh. leaning uh -huh. um, work. That's 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 really the that's really the worst I can I can say on the matter. And with with Tales of Kings and Dragons, that particular issue isn't go isn't isn't go isn't going to be isn't going to be as much of an issue because you've already you've already established that you're going with historical fantasy right from the word go. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we have uh, other things in mind for future. By the way, uh, we can uh, uh, we can you know wheel away from uh, historical and historical fantasy. And go with different uh, routes, but yes, what that was, uh, that that's just our, uh, you know, we have to do uh, historical fantasy. We have to do it. We so uh, the first and second works. Uh, that that's because that's why we are doing it as the first and second works. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, Levant, do, do you uh, do you have anything to add? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, well, I think we didn't really surprise our, uh, say, audience uh, with the level of fantasy there, because uh, there was a dragon uh, breathing flame against a, a giant centipede. So, I mean, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, pretty obvious that, that there are some uh, fantasy elements there. Uh, but uh, for this one, I think we are uh, going for more uh, historical approach, I think. Uh, uh, for Perry Victor, we had in mind that uh, everyone uh, should be able to uh, play in Caribia Victor. So, like, uh, not just the hardcore, uh, uh, hardcore history fantasy fans, but, uh, like, uh, anyone can uh, pick up that book and uh, can try to roll with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was it was um, uh, more uh, more on the fantasy side, I think. But on this one, uh, we thought like we should uh, stick into more to the history. But uh, uh, there will be dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Still, there will be dragons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
now one th one thing that I do f that I do find interesting that you guys are doing is the concept of disciplines. Essentially, a a um a a side a side form of a side form of leveling. Um, where did the idea to do disciplines come from? Was it was it something that was suggested by playtesters? Was it something that was suggested in the office? How did it come about? Um, he, yeah, so D Disciplines is uh, making our, making its debut in uh, in this book, so it was not existent in the uh, Corellia Victor, uh, and it's actually uh, about, you know, blending more historical elements uh, in uh, Dungeons and Dragons in, and into this kind of role, into, the, into this kind of role-playing game and into this kind of uh, campaign uh, so that the players can feel that they are more uh, more of a historical character, uh, you know, emerging from uh, the the uh, the maybe if, if you're playing in the Arthurian legend, you know, you are a Saxon that you can feel more uh, of a Saxon warrior, or you can feel more of a uh, druid uh, that uh, that 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 is coming from Merlin's, uh, you know, cult. So, uh, and oh, okay, it's okay if you have questions or if people have questions. Uh, if you want to learn more about what I'm talking, you can just uh, come to our Kickstarter. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's all for uh, promotion. Uh, so <laughs> let me continue. So uh, the disciplines are uh, here because uh, you know we we want people to not be uh, s simply air. Uh, a ranger, and uh, it's okay that if you are a fantastical version of a ranger, like you play in Dungeons and Dragons standard games, maybe set in uh, set in its generic settings, or uh, it's okay that you, if you are a wizard. But uh, we had to give people uh, some uh, way of uh, playing a wizard in real history. You know, if if uh, let's say you can still be a generic uh, wizard or a generic warlock or any generic sorcerer, it's, it's no problem. But if you want to be a little more uh, historically, um, let's say, accurate, but uh, don't take it very seriously, uh, let's say if you want to be uh, one of the Merlin's cult, uh, maybe it's better that uh, you become you take this discipline, you go into this uh, teaching path and turn yourself into one of the disciples of this discipline and you become, a, for example, Feybound, uh, which is, uh, that's not, uh, which is uh, some of, uh, one from the Merlin's uh, cult, actually. Uh, we, as I said, we, uh, we changed a little bit the story of Merlin, and Merlin uh, eventually leaves this cult and uh, becomes uh, becomes a wizard, like uh, both mechanically and both in the uh, in the sense of game mechanics and uh, in the sense of his uh, in the sense of story mm -hmm. uh, in our version of this legend. But uh, it, you know, also we have the alchemist, for example, uh, that is. Uh, that is quite fit to the uh, Crusades era. You know, in the uh, in the golden age of uh, the Islamic world, uh, the uh, there were many teachings and there were many studies on uh, science, and there were many great alchemists. Hmm. And so, uh, it's okay that if you are a wizard uh, in this age, you may uh, you may try to hide your uh, yourself and hide your powers or uh, reveal them only to a few select people. It's okay if you are a standard wizard, but uh, by being an alchemist wizard, uh, you can actually be a part of that, uh, maybe a community of this, uh, this uh, you know, golden age of uh, Islam's uh, scholars. You may be one of those scholars and uh, you may be an alchemist among them. Uh, and you can uh, very easily uh, hide your magic from others. Uh, and just call it, uh, you know, it, uh, it's ultimate it's science, etc. So uh, uh, that was the uh, that was the uh, go point. Uh, that that was there. That's why they are here uh, to make people 
uh, feel that their characters are uh, are from really somewhere from history, from some nation, from some part of the uh, of the real world. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So it's it sounds to it sounds to me that am I given the given the um fa given the fey bound example that's given when you take when you take a discipline you get it you get a package of benefits and then you can go right you can go right back into the class that you already were yeah exactly uh the, in in a game mechanic uh sense it's uh it works uh very similarly as uh you know multi-classing uh let's say uh in a, let's say you're a druid and you want to be a feybound druid, uh, you just uh, but uh, you just uh, in let's say you are a level three druid, uh, you go into when you're going to level four, uh, you just say you want to go to this uh, feybound uh, feybound discipline and you take its benefits and that's it. Just that's just uh, one. Uh, it's, it's just something for one class. Uh, so you take the fae bound, uh, and then when you advance again into the fifth level, uh, you can then again advance uh, into the druid uh, path and become a fourth level druid. And uh, you know you're you're now a fourth level druid and one level, uh, and it's, it's the only level uh, you and you're in the fae bound now. Uh, but their uh, abilities uh, sometimes uh, come uh, in. In different uh, levels, let's say, because uh, you know you you get the package, uh, but they're un unlocked at uh, different levels. Because uh, when you're, for example, uh, in the uh, in the example of Feybound, uh, when you are one of them, uh, you get extra spells into your uh, Druid uh, spell list. But uh, obviously, you can't uh, you can't uh, cast your uh, you know, highest level uh, Feybound spell right away because <laughs> you don't have the necessary level uh, to cast it. You don't have the necessary spell load. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get the package, uh, but you sometimes you get all the benefits right away. Uh, sometimes you get them, some of them later. Uh, but the important thing is that now you're a Feybound druid and you I have a, a really strong connection with Fey folk, and you you are actually one of the Fey now. Even uh, you're uh, in this class, in this discipline, for example, you uh, you are designated as a Fey uh, as well as an humanoid. Uh, so everything that affects a Fey creature now also affects you. Everything that affects an humanoid creature also affects you because you're a mix of them. Um, it it changes. Uh, it changes everything for you. It changes uh, somehow uh, the uh, if if you want to uh, you know deeply role play it. It it changes your core. So uh, your your it changes your being. So uh, you're you're not a uh, you're not a human anymore, uh, or you're not a humanoid, or you're not an elf anymore. You are now something very very different, and you see the world. And you perceive everything in the world. You perceive the nature. You perceive the, uh, you know, the magical energies, uh, and and your look into the world is now uh, twisted because you are also uh, a, a fey now, actually. Uh, so that's how you can also um, you, you can also role play it. Uh, and bring bring it on, but yeah, uh, in in, a, in uh, if we only speak about game mechanics, uh, you just take uh, instead of taking a level in your core uh, class, uh, um, just as you're multiclassing, you're taking this uh, discipline uh, and then get its benefits. Mm -hmm. So, with that with that in mind, as I. In the preview document, there was there was one there was one, uh, there was one discipline for e for each of the three eras you guys are writing. With the full uh -huh. book, do you plan on have do you plan on having multiple disciplines per each era as well as multiple archetypes? Yeah, we plan at least six uh, disciplines and at least nine archetypes, but um, hopefully we will do more and. 
hopefully even more will be unlocked with the uh, threat goals. Uh, so uh, it's also about our, uh, you know, uh, our uh, level of funding because uh, when we have more funding, we can pay more to our artists. And of course, we can always uh, give that one, uh, you know, one page of uh, something, but mm -hmm. we want to give it full. So uh, if, we, if we are going to do something, we want to do it full. So in order to fund our uh, illustrators and, uh, you know, take and buy more, uh, more art, uh, so we need more funding. So yes, there will be uh, at least six and at least nine, at least six disciplines and at least nine archetypes. Uh, but more will come and uh, even more will be unlocked, hopefully. Yeah. Now, of, co of course, some. From what from what I understand of of this approach, with Caravia Victor, because you were you were essentially establishing a Roman adjacent setting, there was a lot of material that had to be written on the setting. With this one, would it be fair of me to say that it, that you're writing each of the settings of each of the eras in kind of a gazetteer like approach? You know, a series of a series of bullet points to give ideas instead instead of a hard and fast um, world. Yeah, yeah. We uh, in Karovia Victor. We uh, we wrote uh, very in very much detail about uh, both the uh, our version of the Roman Empire, which is the Karovian Empire, and uh, its neighboring uh, its neighboring realms and uh, neighboring states, lands. Uh, but in this one, we won't we won't go in that much detail about the neighboring part. Uh, for example, in the Arthurian uh, legend, when we are talking about the Arthurian setting, uh, we will just talk about uh, Britain. Uh, we'll we'll talk about in detail about uh, about Camelot and its surrounding uh, uh, lands, but we won't go far and uh, tell all uh, about Europe or the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so this same approach will be uh, will be the same for you know for the diff the other era. Um, yeah, Le Levant, do you have anything to add on this topic? I, I wanna I wanna jump on that. Uh, in Caravia Victor, we try to uh, build a world, actually. Uh, so, a, a very large empire uh, spinning all over the world. Uh, so, uh, different parts of the empire and their neighbors. So, it's a, a huge geographical piece and uh, so many things happening there. But, uh, in this one, uh, for Trieras, uh, we are actually focusing on... Uh, the histories, you know, we are trying to tell a story over here uh, So it's about what's happening in uh, our three inch in uh, in Camelot and we are uh, trying to tell the story of uh, uh, Arthur and Merlin So it's not uh, much about the geography and what their neighbors do or anything It's more about a focused approach on the points uh, revolving around the story itself Now, continuing on with that, within e within each of the eras, do you have do you guys have plans for some for some sort of introductory adventure for each? Not a not anything too deep, not anything too detailed, not a full multi session campaign, but just a, a the equivalent of a one shot essentially. Um. What's it? Yeah, we are planning. Um, we are planning uh, actually three adventures for uh, for these settings. One for each uh, each of them. Uh, um, but uh, what we it's also about uh, what we learned from Karavia Victor. In Karavia Victor, we had one uh, introductory adventure. Uh, as you said, it was uh, you know it was one shot or maybe two or three shots at most. Uh, depending on people and time, but uh, in this one, the, the backers wanted more, uh, and the backers all asked for, uh, you know, if you will do more settings, please, uh, you know, write more adventures, and because uh, we all know the, uh, as I said, we all know Arthurian history and Arthurian legends, but uh, w what can we play it uh, today? What can we play it in uh, today's uh, version of King. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I was saying Kings and Dragons, but let's <laughs> say Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, 
uh, so we need uh, new adventures. Uh, and then we just said, okay, we we won't do a small uh, introductory adventure for uh, for these settings. We will uh, we will give full uh, adventures um, for each of them. And what let's say what what do I mean by full adventure? How many sessions uh, will people play, uh, and uh, how much material in it, or will will there be in it? Uh, so they will all be each each adventure will be uh, will be good for at least ten sessions, uh, but uh, at, but that can uh, you know that's the uh, that's the least uh, that's the least number uh, with, with every side quest with everything we will uh, add and uh, with everything we will talk about uh, you can go up to twenty or thirty uh, you know depending on your uh, Depending on your group and the way of your uh, your storytelling, so <clears throat> but uh, as I said, it uh, they will be five or six chapters each. Uh, all of these adventures, and they will take uh, the party uh, from uh, from uh, you know a specific time in uh, history, and uh, the, the the party will then uh, throughout the course of the adventure uh, have. Uh, have a lot of interactions with uh, with real uh, real world historical characters, and then they will uh, have uh, influence on a real uh, world event or crisis uh, or something, uh, or or uh, let's say uh, or uh, fi fantasy fiction uh, crisis. It can also be as in the uh, as in the case of Arthurian legends. So. So they they will be uh, there will be a full adventures uh, on uh, on each of the uh, the eras. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, pretty uh, excited about actually because uh, uh, I really like the idea of uh, giving people a, a huge campaign to uh, play, and I still keep trying to make it, but uh, we can actually. Uh, Merge the campaigns to make a grand campaign, you know, uh, good for like a uh, sixty sessions something, mm -hmm. and I think that would be awesome. But I don't know. I'm still, uh, I'm still uh, hoping to make, it, but to do that. <laughs> yeah, actually, we we can do it's uh, it's doable, but uh, because uh, what because they they all have some uh, common uh, elements in them because. Uh, all of the stories we tell are based on one uh, one world myth. No that we are... <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're let's say they're all connected somewhere. So uh, yeah, they're all connected, and um, the, um, putting them all together and making people uh, play. Of course, why not? So uh, let's say uh, you start with the ancient China. Uh, campaign and ancient China setting. You you go for that adventure. You play it, and uh, in the end, uh, when it's when it's concluded, uh, and if you want to continue, you can then go to the uh, Arthurian uh, legend. But how to carry the players and uh, you know all the people, uh, all the all the characters that we, you were playing. Uh, in the in the ancient China, maybe, maybe their ancestors, uh, maybe your characters in the Arthurian adventure are actually an the ancestors of the uh, ancient China uh, campaign. Uh, maybe they come from the same bloodline. Maybe they are they they belong to the same uh, you know uh, secret uh, faction uh, in history that knows about this uh, these uh, this myths and these dra dragons uh, lurking in the world, etc. Um, but for now, uh, it's you know it's something mm -hmm. optional, and uh, yeah, when we're writing the full book, I think we will have you know long discussions about uh, long discussions about uh, with with Levant about doing uh, this. Uh, but it's oh, it, it's course. not full, it's not fully uh, decided yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we may have some uh, yeah optional. Uh, you know uh, how to make maybe an op optional section about how to make this all three uh, legends into uh, merge into, uh, and merge them uh, a, a grand campaign from all of them, and 
yeah, if, if we go if we go for that route, uh, please know that it's <laughs> it's because the one insisted on it and <laughs> he's making me do it. So, <laughs> but but if yeah, if you agree with him, uh, just uh, just tell us. Uh, I'll tell us in the comments. Tell us in the Kickstarter page. Hopefully, so uh, if you want to see that, uh, I'd be I'd be very happy. Uh, you know, people uh, commented on it or. Uh, no, we we. Now, what about you? What do you th what do you think about it? Do you, do you uh, you know, does it uh, does it sound uh, cool to you? Uh, yeah. Our, our, our master of temple. Uh, for, for for me, it for me, it's all it's it's all it's all about how it's all about how how t the means to bring people in, both as players and. GMs, that that sort of onboarding experience is a bit is a big deal for me, which is the reason why I brought up the concept of some sort of one shot or some sort of campaign to kind of kind of de kind of demonstrate what can be done with each of the potential eras. Because every since 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 my since the first era that's brought up is the Athurian Age, I'll use that I'll use that as a base for what I'm kind of talking about. Everybody knows, on some form or another, the story of King Arthur. But yeah. there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of different stories and a whole lot of different takes that can be that can be de that can be delved into that are in that that are in that same era. This is the reason why I have such a fondness for the Pendragon RPG, for instance. In the same vein, that's also why I find the novel Mists of Avalon to be interesting. You know, it's treading familiar ground, but it's doing in a way that is doing it in a way that is a significantly different approach to the legend than, say, La Morte de Arthur, which is the version that which is the version that I think everyone is the most familiar with. Mm -hmm. And the and because because of that, I think I think having having some sort of story seat or some sort of advent some sort of adventure that is within that era but not necessarily tied to King Ar not necessarily tied to King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table is so, is the kind of thing that's worth exploring um especially since when you have when you have such a va when you have such a vast um set of possibilities it's important to have some sort of foundational spot that people can build around. Um, in yeah, yeah. Like, and what, 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 uh, sorry to uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, what, what do you think about uh, actually thinking about it right now? Made me uh, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit excited. Uh, let's say you finish the uh, Arthurian uh, campaign. Uh, then uh, our Arthurian campaign, and uh, you are let's say you're a knight. And then going on to the Crusade campaign, uh, you actually play uh, a uh, play uh, uh, maybe grand 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 son or granddaughter of this uh, character you, that you just played mm -hmm. uh, in the Crusade era. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> as a writer and as a designer, I'm uh, I'm getting more and more uh, hyped about uh, this. Uh, this idea, but of course, it's if, uh, it's one thing to get me hyped, and it's <laughs> one thing to get uh, other people, uh, you know, interested yeah. and uh, think about it. So I would say, yeah. The, 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 do you think it will be good, or do you just say, no, okay, it's not not necessarily, uh, etc. Um, I would say I would say a way to a way to kind of do that to the point where it actually has some. Narrative and mechanical weight. If you wanted to do that kind of connecting, is, and I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I have some ideas on how this could be done, but I'm, I'm, I haven't nailed it down to one. Is some sort of, le some sort of legacy rule, i.e., what whether it be a, a heirloom that a heirloom that's pa that's passed down, or so, or something that so that when so that somebody could take the high level character that they've built for the for the end of one campaign and bring it and carry over some of the some of a couple of the items or a cup or a couple tricks or whatnot 
um, into the into their new character to represent. Yeah, this somebody, this person is a descendant of the person from the previous campaign. Yeah, great, and that's that's how uh, as a designer you take. Uh, you know, free. Uh, you know, you, you take some ideas for free from other people around you. And okay, I'm writing those down. Thank Great. You. And I'm, I'm I'm not claiming ownership on this idea. <laughs> and if I give any suggestions, steal the shit out of them. <laughs> like I, I am. Yeah, great artist steal, right? If you steal from one person, it's plagiarism. If you steal from a dozen people, it's research. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great approach. <laughs> That's the sprint. But when it comes to when it comes to the oh, when it comes to this idea, this idea, I th I think it I think it's it's something it's something that can be done. Um, eh, because because um. There's all there's all the, there's all this talk about cr about creating your epic story through Dungeons and Dragons or through or through other um, fantasy games, but the thing the thing about a epic, if we look if we look at a lot of epics throughout hi throughout history and throughout fiction, is that the span of time that they encompass is many gen is many years and and sometimes many generations. Um, the full scope of of the ages with Middle Earth is a period of thousands of years. Um, you ha you have you have all of the you, to if I have to use Star Wars as another example, you have you have multiple generations of of characters throughout different eras. Um, there's pl there's plenty of mythologies that ha that have the concept of a reincarnating hero coming coming back to deal with it to deal with this. Um, recur this recurring evil. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so th but the key thing with all of that is is time and scope, and a lot of a lot of games have have the focus on the on the legend of the characters that you're built that you're building now, but the idea of adding t of adding a degree of time to that. Of the of this multi generational arc that you're that you're creating, that's not something that's been explored all that much. Um, the I've used it myself as, in some of my campaigns, and I used the video game Dragon Valor way back on the PlayStation as my template, because in that one, you get the magic sword, you slay the dragon, you rescue the princess, and then you continue the game on as your descendant. I'm vastly simplifying, but that but you, I think you can get the gist of what I'm getting at with this. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because slaying the slaying the dra slaying the dragon is is one thing, but um, slaying slaying the dragon yeah. slaying the dragon that your ancestor ancestor fought against a hundred years ago that's going to have a different weight to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's that's great. So uh, I, uh, I think it can, it can be done, but uh, the question is, uh, could we do it? Like you know, uh, if the uh, ten or uh, 20, uh, 20 episodes would be enough, or uh, would you really like to play a, a grand campaign like uh, six stations something? Was it uh, like what would you like? You know, uh, uh, ten ten stations, six stations. What would uh, exactly more actually there's been this in my opinion there's been this narrative for several years that d and d gets boring at high levels I look mm -hmm. in my opinion that particular narrative is on, is only half true if it's a ca it's a case of um pe of people accepting the narrative but not not quite un not quite examining why people think that's the case and for me the a the answer has been that that there is a lack of s support for high levels um, the core ma the core material is so focused on having that new player experience that it doesn't do enough effort in keeping the keeping those new players to stick around for high levels and instead just repeating the new player experience all over again and 
I think if you I think if you give people if you give people a a means and a tool set to support to for that for that high level play, then people will um, stick around for for those for those high levels. Um, obvious, obviously, that's not an easy solution to, to fix. But for for me, um, as far as the length of as far as the length of episodes. I think it would be I think it would be best to look at it to look at it less as a series of dungeon crawls and more and more like a three act structure that you would see for a television season. Yeah. Oh. or the or the four act structure that's that's used in a lot of manga, the Kisho Tenkets um, approach, which is it is a special be is a special beast in and of itself, but it is one way to approach this kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Um, also, uh, I'm I'm sure you're familiar with the you know Elder Scrolls series, Morrowind, Skyrim, uh, Oblivion, etc. So yeah. Uh, when uh, what we're presenting right now is uh, like uh, if you play in uh, our uh, ancient China setting, and if you play that that, that adventure, uh, of course you can also play other adventures that uh, you're right. That uh, people write, but we're we're just giving you one so and the setting, so you can write your. But uh, let's go on and uh, play the setting. Let's say you're doing it. Uh, it's like uh, in in the current version, it's something like uh, that. Okay, you're playing the Morrowind right now, uh, and if when you complete it, you have completed a full quest, you have completed a full game uh, that would satisfy you. You can go on. Uh, but or you can stop. Uh, if you go on, you're playing, uh, you know, Oblivion. It's uh, it's something like uh, I'm I'm talking about the current version, uh, not the linked uh, version that Levant suggests. Uh, uh, if, we, if you're playing Oblivion, okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, uh, it it has some familiar names and some familiar uh, you know history information. Uh, you you hear something that happened uh, in Morrowind uh, earlier, but you know it has no direct uh, direct you know connection. Uh, it the, the story is is not part of that uh, the, the narrative of the second uh, second game uh, or the next game. Let's say it's not the second game. So uh, and when you uh, go on and uh, go to the Skyrim. Uh, in our case, let's uh, let's go. Let's jump to the uh, first the Arthurian, uh, then uh, to the Crusades era. Uh, again, it's uh, it has no real connection. Uh, it's just uh, something happened in the past. They, they were they were important events, okay, but uh, you know not that important about that game specifically. It's not the continuation of this game. So what we have right now in Tales of Kings and Dragons is uh, very similar to uh, that line of uh, separate games set in the same world, uh, yes, yeah, set in the set, the same mythos. Uh, we, we have uh, something that connects both, but uh, they're they're separate games altogether. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, connecting them uh, would be, uh, you know, would require a lot of uh, work. From our side, uh, but it's it's definitely uh, something we can think about, and it's definitely a different uh, version of the game. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's why we uh, we have written uh, maybe nearly half of the book uh, for now. But uh, that that's what we will discuss and maybe write on the other half uh, of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now. With that, with that in mind, what are you guys shooting for as far as a page count for King for Tales of Kings and Dragons? Uh, I can always say sky is the limit, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, no, minimum should be like what? No, no sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, go, Hundred and sixty, I think, should be the minimum. Uh, but we can uh, go up to two hundreds, uh, and 
it's it will be uh, more about uh, the support we get uh, in Kickstarter, because uh, like uh, Batu said, uh, we need to pay the artists, mm. and uh, it's all about having the funds to make it bigger. Actually, because uh, uh, you might have realized uh, that uh, we don't want to do things uh, small. We like to go all the way. So. Uh, if you ask me, I, I want to make a 500 uh, pages book <laughs> because why not? The more is the merrier. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that it will be uh, if uh, if we uh, if we have the uh, sufficient uh, funding, it will be somewhere uh, between uh, 200 and 250. But yeah, as uh, uh, as he said, <laughs> yeah, we, we can. Uh, we want to do more. We want to tell more stories, and uh, we want to tell about. Uh, uh, we want to give more uh, disciplines, more archetype, more game mechanics, and uh, so yeah. If we will do that, we will. Uh, we will no need uh, more funding. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, at least two two hundred is uh, what what I. Uh, when, when I see it, uh, the way I look, and uh, it's um, you know it's actually uh, hard to guess because uh, you know it affects a lot of things. One, just uh, one, uh, make it make it one bigger typo. Than, uh, if you if you write all the texts with uh, one uh, one uh, one point uh, bigger typo uh, and the font, and it's just. You know, uh, it, it just adds fifty more pages. Uh, do we do we want that or uh, or not? Uh, you know, having more pages and having uh, having a bigger book doesn't mean that it's uh, you know it it contains uh, a lot of uh, stuff. It contains uh, you know that that, uh, that it's more maybe uh, it's more quality. Uh, than the other one, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Uh, so uh, it, it's a it, we need to find a balance in there. I think we found it in the Carolia Victor. Uh, so the fonts were uh, good to read, and but they were not very big. Uh, they were not very small. Uh, they uh, they and uh, in the. Uh, in the sense of you know economics, in the sense of pr printing, uh, it uh, it costs uh, an effective uh, value. So uh, I think we'll go ahead with that uh, also in uh, Tales of Kings and Dragons, uh, um, or or we can change that a little bit. Uh, it uh, it all it all depends on you know uh, how we will present it. We. We are, uh, me and Levant, we are just, you know, we, we are designers, we are writers, we want to tell stories uh, to our players, and of course we are uh, mm -hmm. you know, game masters, but uh, in when it comes to designing uh, the book, the, the page layout, and everything, it's, it's a whole different uh, set of things. Uh, we did something good in Corovia Victor, and we uh, did uh, other things uh, very, uh, you know, very badly. Uh, we learned from our mistakes, uh, and right now we are going more professional uh, in uh, in the sense of page layout and uh, you know, in the sense of uh, the, the the printing of the book uh, right now. So I think. Uh, I think these decisions will also have to be addressed to uh, to our team members that work with us on the uh, on the on the uh, book design uh, with us. Mm -hmm. And I, I will... is, is really oh sorry, uh, bigger font design uh, is uh, really not that good for environments, but our uh, we have a talented artist now working with us. And she will decide what's going to happen on the tax. Mm -hmm. And I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how to seeing how it how it develops with time. Um, what date? What date do you guys have in mind for the for the launch of the Kickstarter proper? 
Um, we decided uh, on about uh, the 20th of May, uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, it can be one day uh, later, one day, uh, one day further, uh, but uh, it, it will be bef before the end of May, ob obviously we are certain of that, uh, but uh, the, the exact date is not yet decided, but it's about 20th, I think. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I will be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Of course we'll drink. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the drinks. It's so mm -hmm. nice. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come on t to the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody!